Hi, it's Dirk from Century again, and in this video, we are going to talk about how to set up Git Actions to automate our source map and release generation process directly from a GitHub workflow. This diagram provides some context into what we've been working on and what we're about to do. Um, so up till this point, if you've been following along with any of these videos, we created the simplest Vite project ever. Uh, we deployed it using the Sentry SDK. We already built our code owners, our super simple code owners, and pushed them to GitHub. And we also set up the GitHub integration to do source mapping and stack trace linking and the code owners piece we talked about. And we've automated quite a bit of this stuff. Last couple things that we need to do are set up Git actions so that it automates this whole process of setting up the release and pushing the source maps to, uh, to Sentry. And then we can talk a little bit about how to assign issues if you're using GitHub to assign issues bidirectionally. So let's get started. We can start in a couple different places here, uh, but the first place that probably makes sense is in VS Code. So let's pivot over there. To set up a GitHub workflow, we actually need uh, a couple extra components here within our GitHub folder. The first is I need a folder named workflows. GitHub requires this. This is just their convention. So anything in this workflows folder will be considered a GitHub action. Uh, and to set that up, you can call this, I think, anything you want. And as long as it's got a YAML extension, I'll call it release YAML. And inside of release YAML, I'm going to copy from another project all the steps that we need in order to facilitate this. It's kind of uh, longish, so let me pull this terminal down and let's scroll up to the top and just talk quickly about this. First thing is the trigger. Um, there are lots of different ways you can trigger a workflow within GitHub. I'm just triggering it on any time we push to the main branch. Uh, of course, you can do this with other branches. You can do it on other triggering types. Uh, things like if you have um, a pull request, for example, you could have that as a trigger. After you've defined what you're triggering the workflow on, then you define the job steps that you have to, uh, that you're going to walk through. And these can be done in parallel or in serial. I'm doing them in serial just so it's clearer what we're doing. If we just scroll through these quickly, um, I'm, I won't go to each one of these. I'm just gonna explain them. Uh, I, I did another video here on this. And if I go to explain each one of these, it takes forever. Uh, basically, each uh, each step uh, checks out your repo, which is what this action is doing, and it fetches to depth zero. If you don't fetch to depth zero, it won't see all of your subdirectories, and you do need those in order to make this work, specifically for uh, things like fetching your source maps. This is just a dry run, so you can, uh, in this tagging action that we're going to talk about next, you can do a dry run if you don't want it to actually uh, do the entire build process, just so you can see what's happening before you actually commit to it. I've got that all commented out because I do want it to finish the entire process. Then what I'm doing here is, or what this what this action is doing is it is creating a tag for the release. Above here, uh, and this is kind of backwards, I know I'm also outputting that tag. So that tag is going to provide us what is the next uh, release tag that we're going to be using. Uh, so this is a semantic versioning tag and it basically will use a commit message, so a hashtag major, hashtag minor, hashtag patch to auto-generate what the next version should be of your release. Does it automatically? It takes a look at your repo and it figures out what the next one should be. We're gonna pass that data. So we're gonna pass the release tag that gets created down into this next one, which is the tag gets created, but now we need to generate a actual GitHub release. So this will keep the GitHub release in sync with the Sentry release. And that's done using a release action. And that release action uh, is here. So it uses um, the tag that we generated earlier. And so this needs keyword is pulling in the output from our generate get tags, the outputs that we defined, and it's using that output new tag variable that contains the tag for the release. And it needs a GitHub token. We'll set these up in GitHub in a little bit, but it needs a GitHub token. And that's what the changelog release value is. I could just as easily call that GitHub token and it would be valid. The, the actual value contained in that secret is your GitHub token. I've tried doing it without it. And I've tried using the 
um, context GitHub token, but doesn't seem to work. It should be in this workflow given you're in GitHub, but for some reason you have to generate a specific token. I'm guessing that's to manage scopes. In any case, if anybody knows, feel free to let me know. But the next step is actually generating the century release. So we're passing along the Git tags and the release that we created above into the century release step. And we're checking out our code again, fetch depth zero, important again, so that it has access to your entire repo, which you need in order to send the source maps up correctly. I'm doing a split on the GitHub repository name. I want to use the repository as part of our versioning. So that tag only created the v1.00 or v1.0.1. It doesn't actually append the repository name. So I want to add that to the release in Sentry so that we know uh, just from a naming convention standpoint, it's how we like to do it. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that without using an action within get action. So that's what this action is here for to allow you to split a string. Then the next is just to echo that repo name so we can see what it is in the console output. And now we finally have gotten to our century release action, which takes an auth token, an org, and a project, sets the context. Remember, releases are tethered to your project and uh, your org. And then it sets which environment, you can set this to whatever you like. It sets the version, and this is where all those previous outputs come in handy. So the split is taking the second value within the split. This is just a, a simple array index. So underscore one is the second value. And that will give us the repo name. And then it's taking that new tag output and creating the final release naming. Then the final, these should be familiar. We saw these with the Sentry CLI. If you saw that video when we were doing source map uploads, I'm gonna tell it where the source maps are, and then I'm going to prepend the URL prefix so that it correctly finds those source maps after it uploads them into Sentry. Now, something that we do need to make a sm small change on before we push this, actually there are two things we need to do. I could actually get add and push this now up to GitHub but because we haven't set any of our secrets in our project, in our GitHub repo, this is going to fail. So if I were to send this up right now, it definitely wouldn't work. It would give us a failure uh, on that step that required the GitHub token. And if it were somehow to get past that, it would give us an error on the Sentry auth token. So we need to go set those up before we actually push this up to our GitHub repo. One other thing that we need to do while we're here before we push is to change our Git ignore. And right now our Git ignore is ignoring our dist directory. But if you'll recall, in our dist directory is where our minified code is that Sentry needs in order to produce the correct source maps. Now, you could always change this, uh, you could always change your build process to push these to a different directory if you don't wanna push your dist directory up, that's entirely up to you. But at the end of the day, in order to fetch it from GitHub, we need to have it pushed to GitHub. So I'm going to comment out this dist just so that that directory uh, so that directory actually gets uploaded the next time we do a git add. So we're done here. Now we just need to go and fill in all of these secrets in GitHub. So we need auth token, org, project. Oops, Pro I didn't mean to do that. I meant to copy. I think I was, man, I do not know how to, <laughs> I keep hitting control V and then let's control C this one as well. So now we have all of the values we need. If we pivot back over to GitHub now, in our project, we need to set those settings and that happens to be in settings. And if we go down to secrets, actions, we can see there are no repository secrets. And this is where you set those values so that the Git action can find them. So if I look here, we've already, these are pre-populated from previous times doing this. If I click org, our, my demo org is called QuickStark. And then if we add another repository secret, we can call the project, which is uh, React Sentry GitHub. So that are those two. And now we need the actual, um, we need one of two things. We either need to go to Sentry and grab our auth token, or we need to grab the same thing within GitHub. Let's do the GitHub one first since we're already on this page. If we uh, go to our settings, so we need to go here and then to settings, slightly different settings than we were just in. We were just in the repo settings. Now we're in our overall GitHub settings. 
And if I scroll down, I can get to developer settings and then personal access tokens. Now you could potentially use other types of tokens, I suppose, uh, but I'm just gonna generate a new uh, access token and call this something like uh, get actions, uh, let's see, part duh, since I already have one. I'm gonna make this no expiration for now, uh, just so I don't have to come back and do this again. And we'll give it, I believe the minimum for that get action that we saw was repo access so that it can fetch the um, uh, previous tags and that sort of thing. Uh, I always give it uh, access to update the workflow as well, but I don't think it needs it. And the rest we can basically ignore because it's not deleting the repo or anything like that. Now I have this token, we can copy this. And now we can go back to our project setting and uh, in, in, implement this new secret. I'm gonna go back to here and let's find our GitHub settings, um, back to secrets, actions. And in here, we are going to create this changelog release, which as we saw before is just our GitHub token. And now the last thing we need to do is the exact same thing, but on the Sentry side. So back in Sentry, I'm just at my main page. I'm gonna to go to settings and then I'm gonna to go to developer settings. We're gonna do an internal integration. You can see I already developed this here. Um, I'll, I, can, uh, I can delete this if we wanna get rid of it uh, and start over. So let's create a new one, internal integration. Next, we'll call this get actions part duh. And then here we need admin access to the release and read access to the organization. But feel free to play with that if you need more permissions. And then we save the changes. And once we save the changes, we can scroll down to the bottom and grab our token. Heading back to GitHub now, we need to create this repository secret. And this one is now our Sentry auth token. And we paste that in and add that secret. So now we're done with all of the secrets. And if we push the workflow now, given our, all of our secrets are set, it should go ahead and pick up on that and do all the actions that we are looking for it to do. Great. Let's pivot back over to VS Code. And now we can go ahead and do a git add. We can do a git commit. And if we wanted to do a major version here, we could say major, minor, patch, or if you put none in, I believe it tries to optimistically determine what the release numbering should be. If we do a patch, it's gonna put a dot one at the end of our previous release. Okay, so we're done with this, and now we should be able to push our revised code with our release to GitHub and watch it run. Well, if we flip back over to this main area, you can see when this little amber dot, uh, for lack of a better term, is, is here. That means we're actually um, running this um, action. So it already picked it up and it's already doing the actions that we set. If you wanna get back to the main actions page, you can actually watch all of this work. So if I click on the overall action, we can see the git tags were created. There's a nice green check. It's producing the GitHub release now. Uh, and then once this is done, it will create the Sentry release and we can go look at, at, uh, at the results of that once it's finished. So as we, two hours later, it's going to finish at some point here. And we should have everything done, including a new release and tag in GitHub, as well as a matching release in Sentry. and it's finished. So this all finished successfully. You can go into any of these to see the actual info for the job. And if you want to run things like echoing the GitHub context, um, uh, et cetera, you can do all of this stuff within here. If you wanna look at what the output of the get tags was, you can see that the next release will be 1.1, .1, which is what we expected since we did a minor uh, patch release. So you can see all of the context within the job summary here. If we go back to our repo now, you can see the release was created and now I can click into the release and I can see the GitHub release. And if I go now to Sentry, I should be able to see 
a 1.1 release here with a production tag. So all that's great. The last thing that we need to do is take a look at our source maps. So if we just do our shortcut key, we go to GitHub settings and we go down to source maps. We see there are two artifacts here with the appropriate tilde assets, uh, etc., that we talked about uh, in a previous video. So now our stack trace should work just fine. And we've automated this whole process using a simple GitHub actions workflow. Hopefully that made some sense. I know that's a lot to take in in one video, but uh, hopefully it made sense. Rewind, pause, ask questions, and uh, hopefully this uh, was helpful. Next video, we'll talk about assigning issues. Thanks.